Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today we're going to uh, going to work on an Offshore Angler, which is a store brand of the uh, Bass Pro Shops. And in this case, it's a 4.0 reel. It's called the Sea Fire. Uh, it's a 4.0, uh, which is a bigger reel intended for big fish. And a customer of mine brought this in because it wasn't operating properly. Uh, the fix was real simple. The uh, customer had overloaded the spool with line. The line was rubbing on the cross posts and that caused it to, um, uh, to operate poorly. Uh, it seems to be working fine now, but as, as long as I have that reel in, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tune this reel up. So I don't know the reel. Uh, I've never worked on one before, but that doesn't mean that uh, I'm shy about these things. I'm going to go ahead and you can learn along with me. We'll all open this up and see what we have here. So <laughs> it looks like we start with uh, the side plate screws. Uh, I always like to take the side plate off, the gear side, and uh, figure out what's going on in there. Uh, these are flat bladed screws here. So uh, we'll use a flat bladed screwdriver to do this. You know, a lot of people ask me, what, what about the store, uh, store brands? Uh, and I, I don't think there's any problem with them if you're sticking to the main stores and if they back their product. So in this case, this is a Bass Pro. Uh, you might be working with a Cabela's. Maybe you're working with a Gander Mountain. I've seen a lot of Gander Mountains. Uh, you know, they, they typically will go offshore and uh, contract with a major reel manufacturer. Uh, as many of you probably know, there's only a few real manufacturers out there. So, for example, uh, the Zebco line, uh, there's one manufacturer that makes Zebco, Rhino, Quantum, Va uh, Van Stahl, uh, and so on, right? Uh, they all have different brands, but it's really one plant uh, making those. Sort of like washing machines, right? You can get 20 different washing machines, uh, but they're all generally made by somebody else. So. Uh, not to div uh, divert here, but for example, a Sears Kenmore uh, in most likelihood is a GE uh, product, right? So a lot of times these reels are the same way. They'll go offshore, they'll find a major manufacturer, and they'll slap their own brand name on them. Now, I'm not familiar with the offshore angler, so uh, we're going to go figure this one out as we play along. But I have 20 years of experience in reels. I've pretty much seen... Uh, most of the ways that these are laid out and for conventional reels there's not a lot of difference there in terms of what the uh, uh, the, the layouts can be. So let's uh, let's have a look see what's going on here. Now this is interesting okay so I've seen this uh, configuration before uh, as a matter of fact let me walk off camera I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna just uh, confirm that but to me that's a uh, uh, Garcia Mitchell from the 70s. So hang on a second. I'll be right back. Well, here we go. All right, so this is a Garcia Mitchell yellow series. It's the 600 series. This reel has been around since the 70s. Let's, uh, let's open this one up. It has some thumb screws. It has the, uh, the other screws as well, right? You can loosen them and then you can Move them out with your thumbs. There's only four of them. I apologize for diverting off of this, but it uh, should be fun. Let's see if, uh, if we prove our hunch is right. Let's take a look. Yeah, there we go. So, a little bit different, but not much. So, they're using a design from the 70s here. It involves a fork to, to move the uh, spool gear down and uh, then a bridge plate that has the gearing. So there you go. So uh, I don't know if this reel was manufactured by Garcia Mitchell uh, or the design was taken and uh, moved forward with them or what the case is, but uh, that gives me a little confidence in how to work with this reel. Okay, so as many of you know, we want to take that drive side out and take a look at uh, what's going on there. And uh, to do that, I'll remove the uh, handle nut. I use a parts bucket, as uh, you may be, have noticed. I put all my small parts in there so that, uh, I, that I know where they are when I go to reassemble the reel. I'm not taking the handle off. I back the handle off by reversing the star drag nut. It's much easier to lever it out that way than it is to try and wrench the, uh, the handle off. Next, uh, next comes a, uh, a stop washer between the two and then the star drag. So this is a good time to tell you if you don't know and I don't know this reel. Uh, if you don't know the sequence, if you can't remember how you're taking the parts off to take pictures, uh, a lot of times I would tell you to take your cell phone out, uh, take a, uh, a, a regular digital camera or something to record 
the sequence of these. Uh, there's a there's a bearing here I'm trying to get out. Uh, but uh, you know, make, make sure that uh, one way or another, you know, you have a resource to go back to to figure out uh, what's going on here. In this case, I have the video. I'm running it here as part of this YouTube demonstration. So if I get lost along the way, I'll have a reference point that I can go back to the video and try and figure this out. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to take the bridge plate screws out. <coughs> There's four of them, and again, this this looks near identical to the uh, that Garcia Mitchell from the '70s in terms of product design. The Mitchell didn't have a bearing. This one has three bearings. It's a nice quality reel. I suspect that uh, whatever the cost of this, that there's great value in buying this as a store brand. Uh, if you have one of these, we'll uh, play along here and figure out how to uh, how to tune this up. Okay, so with that, uh, I've push that through. On top of that drag stack came the the bearing and then the shim washer before the drags. Also popping out of that was the anti-reverse dog and the spring. <laughs> uh, it's a good time to tell you uh, always be careful of that spring. That spring uh, tends to shoot and if you lose that spring and don't have replacements it's a problem. Okay so let's go underneath then. Uh, see what we got. So we have that uh, that compression function that sits inside the the case with the spool gear. There's a bearing underneath that. So the first part of uh, of tuning this up would be to put a drop of oil in the bearing back there. That bearing is very similar to the Pen 40. There's a bearing on the side plate there. Uh, so we can go ahead and and do that. And then I'd like to put a little bit of uh, grease on that spool gear. So we'll go ahead and do that. I use a blue grease. In this case, it's made by Pen. I'll, uh, I'll put some on that as well. I grease moving parts and I oil the, uh, uh, the, the bearings. So I'll just set that aside for a moment. And let's go over to the drag stack here. It uh, looks like it's a nice, clean, operative piece. So it doesn't look like this reel's been used much. Uh, but for the purposes of the demonstration here, uh, we'll just go ahead and put this back together. So we have a a lot of drags in here. That means that you got good max drag. You have a drag sitting on the bottom of the main gear, followed by a flat washer. And again, I have these taken out in the sequence that they were installed there. But typically, they go uh, metal washer, composite washer, metal washer, and so on. And it looks like there's a lot of eared washers here. That's the ones with the little points on each side and uh, that they alternate here in terms of being seated. So this looks like about a seven or an eight drag system. It's uh, They're all well oiled so I don't have to do anything in terms of adding additional lubrication to these. And again this is just uh, as much a learning experience as it is making sure that this wheel is ready to go again uh, for the spring. Okay and then we put the fabric on and then we've got, boy there's a lot of drags in this stack. Uh, I think that this is uh, a heavy duty reel as advertised. Okay, here's your last of the uh, uh, the eared washers, last of the fabric. You'll notice I'm wearing a protective glove there. Uh, I like to keep as much contaminants off my hand as I can. And then we have the two of these that go on. And then if you remember, there was a collar that we took off. And there was a nice bearing. It's a sealed bearing, so we don't have to do anything with that one. And then you remember when we went up top to the uh, the drag stack there, uh, there was a, uh, a collar nut that sits before the store. Okay, so we have this in. And again, I'm a little bit familiar with that other one, so I, I sort of know how this goes. Uh, remember, we pushed it through the side so we didn't see exactly, so if I stumble here, we'll know. We're going to put that main drive in, and we're going to tilt this up a little bit. Now, if you work with pens, you tilt down, but this uh, this cam here that uh, holds that um, uh, spool release in won't allow you to do it the <coughs> do it the other way. So you move that up. You grab the the uh, re anti reverse dog, which is very similar to a pen. Partially insert that screw in that bottom uh, corner. Go ahead and put that dog in underneath. Oh, we've gone too far with that. There we go. Put the dog in and make sure that the screw comes through the dog. Then that little spring that we were using, that controls the action on the, the anti-reverse that goes in. And then we just do that little turn back to line up the screw with that bridge hole. Once we did that, we can start uh, securing that. I just like to make a short turn on that until I have the other nuts in. 
and I alternate those screws in an X pattern just like I would do on a pen reel just to make sure that they're equal force against that bridge plate and that it doesn't bind. I'll go ahead and do that. Right, all this uh, customer learns that uh, the technology in this reel goes back to the 70s with the, uh, the Garcia Mitchell. There you go. Although I still don't know the manufacturer. So Mitchell, I believe, was acquired by Pure Fishing. I think that they also have uh, Abu and uh, some other uh, products in that line that they, that they sell, but I, I can't say with certainty. Okay, so we had the bearing there. We're gonna put that little bearing shim on. Next up is the uh, star drag. Okay, it seems like I'm remembering. I don't have to go to the video, but again, if you uh, if you don't do this frequently, then no shame in taking pictures and, and understanding what's going on there. Uh, next on is the handle. Handle nut. We'll tighten that down. And then there's only one other thing I'd like to do. I'd like to load the spool on the other side of the bearings before I uh, complete this exercise. Okay, tighten down there. So let's take that spool out. There's a bearing in the back here that requires some oil. We'll go ahead and put a drop of oil on that. Just to make sure that's well lubricated, that one's not sealed. And then we'll just put a little bit of blue grease on that uh, spool shaft there. This is all clean. Again, I took this, the major problem that we had with this was the reel was binding and it was binding because there was too much spool on, uh, too much line on the spool. I guess if the spool capacity here is uh, 400 yards, they tried to put 450 yards on there. But uh, okay, so now we're back to uh, just uh, putting the finishing touches on uh, reinstalling the side plate screws and we'll give it a test and uh, we'll consider this one done for the, uh, the purpose of this video and uh, we both learned something out of this. We learned that uh, there's no shame in buying a, uh, a, uh, a quality store brand. This one certainly has got the quality. Uh, you want to make sure, of course, that uh, that off-brand, uh, you know, has a guarantee. In this case, I'm sure you could bring it back to Bass Pro if, uh, if this reel wasn't working properly and that they would uh, honor the warranty. And uh, most of the time, it's interesting with store brands because they... They generally don't have the repair teams. You'll read the warranties, and the warranties will say uh, repair or replace. And a lot of the low-end stuff, uh, particularly uh, spinning reels, they'll never uh, never repair. They'll just replace if it's within the warranty period. So I would encourage you, if you are buying those kinds of reels, to fill out that warranty card. And uh, chances are you'll get a, uh, a new reel in the, in the event that the, uh, the old reel breaks. Uh, just because uh, it's cheaper for them to just replace the reel that they uh, that they had manufactured for them than it is for them to uh, to go ahead and uh, do the uh, do the work on and try and figure out uh, the like. I don't know if you've been in Bass Pros or Cabela's lately, but uh, I always find that back room the last stop there, and sometimes they're they're selling those store returns uh, for a couple of bucks, you know, as broken just because they, uh, that's what they do. They'll send out a new one and then they'll, they'll get you, uh, they'll just dispose of the others. I also buy through a wholesaler for, uh, for reels from time to time and I get the store returns come back. So that's what leads me to assume that uh, they're not repairing them. They're just, uh, just uh, honoring their warranty by replacing them. So not to say that, uh, that that will happen specifically to you, but again, no shame in buying a store brand. It's probably made by a major manufacturer. Uh, once you have a look inside, you can pretty much determine who that is because they all kind of have their own little signature ways of doing things. And uh, in this case, I would tell you if you're shopping for a, uh, a 4.0 reel, I like what I see in this one. It's got a quality design. It's got three ball bearings. It seems to be solid construction. And in a minute, we'll just turn this here. And there you go. So we have a nice operating reel. Again, three ball bearing store brand. It's the um, the Bass Pro Offshore Angler. It's their Sea Fire series. It's a 4.0. It's a quality reel. It's easy to work on once you know. And oh, by the way, uh, 
What will happen to this guy? Well, since I brought it out, I might as well uh, clean this one up and do a video on this one as well. This is the Garcia Mitchell uh, 600 series. It's the old uh, yellow-sided reels. Uh, it got a lot of uh, rust and corrosion on that uh, that part there. We'll show you how to clean that one up and repair that on the next video. So I hope uh, you've enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I certainly learned something today. Uh, if you have one of these, I hope it, uh, it shows you that you bought a quality reel and that it's easy to tune this reel up. And uh, if you like this, please uh, indicate so that you liked it on the video. And if you want to subscribe and see more of these, then please subscribe to my channel. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.